Hello, I'm Ladybug. <laughs> uh, and I'm Chat Noir. <laughs> no, actually, uh, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on... <laughs> Miraculous, The Adventures of Ladybug and Chat Noir, Season 1. Oh yeah, Season 1. Well, Season 2 isn't out yet, so... Yeah, I'm just so used to recording stuff that might only have one season that just saying the name and leaving up seasons. But we now know there's a second season on the way. And there's a bunch of preview slash spoiler images which I have looked at, but Amber's like, no! <laughs> I can extrapolate a lot of data from very little information. <laughs> yes. Like, what is this math problem? One. It's actually this. Hold- <laughs> ah. So, yeah. This is one of those shows where at first I was like, eh, it's probably no good. I mean, I'm seeing it all over Tumblr and stuff like that. Eh, it kind of looks okay. Some more images, some more GIF sets of it. I'm like, hmm, I'll give it a shot. Download it, then immediately, next time I talk to Ember, we gotta watch this show! <laughs> and that was a while ago. <laughs> yeah, little issue with finding the rest of the episodes in French, because I watched one episode in English and... Uh, let's just say I prefer the French. And then there's me. I gotta find as many episodes in English as possible. Because I like, I'm okay with watching things in its original language, but if it's available in English, I will watch it in English. Especially if they stay as close to the story as possible, which they did on the Ladybug one. They really did. The main change was episode order, which tends to happen when things get uh, pushed around internationally. And I don't mind watching in English if it's well done. I Roger thought... Cop was not particularly well done. <laughs> I liked it. I liked all of the amount I've seen in English so far. Because I didn't actually finish the entire series because Nickelodeon apparently had a hiccup where they only got a certain number of episodes at first. And they broadcast those, so I was able to watch those in English. And I was like, I gotta finish this series. So I found a nice site and watched the rest in French. Yeah, I just... I get so concerned when Nickelodeon gets anything good because they don't know how to handle it. Especially when it's licensed by Disney everywhere else. Yeah, I want to know why Disney didn't license it here. I mean, then I could just go to the Disney store and buy a Chat Noir costume instead of piecemealing it. I barely started. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> Yes, she does like her cosplay. <laughs> now everyone's going to want me to take pictures of it, but nope, I may draw it sometime. <laughs> I'm a little more forgiving when I have a mask on. <laughs> uh, but to the actual series itself, it's definitely one of those series that when you watch it, it's okay, but the more you watch it, the better it gets. This one really harkens back, and it reminds me a lot of a series called Code Lyoko. The episodes in the first season are disjointed as heck. There's no real connected story, but there's backstory that you're like, I want to know more about that. Give me more of that. The characters are interesting enough that she's like, I like this show for the characters, but I wish it had more story. And then the second season comes along, and you're like, okay. I'll take that. <laughs> That's really what we're hoping is going to happen with Ladybug because there are so many little hints and touches of detail backstory that I would really love to see where they could go with it if they focused on story. Because in terms of character development, it's pretty much non-existent. <laughs> well, we have a little bit, especially with the main characters, they seem to hold it more than the rest of the cast. Cough, Chloe, cough. <laughs> Because she ha she's had several episodes in this first season where, like, I'm going to be nicer. Next episode, I am ape again. Because <laughs> that's her character. Basically, I'm the mean girl. Yes, we've had several people akumatized because of her. She's been akumatized herself, but apparently has still learned nothing. Mm-hmm. And it's like, also, I think even the French order is out of order on a couple episodes. Yes, yeah, specifically Guitar Villain and Digital, those two needed to be flipped. Because in Guitar Villain, Jagged Stone already had the glasses that Marinette made, where in Digital, that was where she gave them to him. Well, indirectly, but still, she was responsible for it. I mean, indirectly, she gave them to his agent. 
apparently their item numbers look interesting because each episode has an item number. And I'm almost tempted to watch the episodes in the item number order because maybe that's the original order they were made in and written in. That would be very interesting, not even to necessarily watch them in that order, but just organize them in that order and see how it plays out. Another comparison between this and Code Lyoko is the origin story was the last two episodes of the season. Yes, they get you hooked and get you asking questions, but they don't answer any of those questions until the end. And they do it with the origin story of how the main characters get their power or find the supercomputer. So basically, they just throw you straight into the action, and get you hooked on the action, and then they tell you why there's action later. Mm-hmm. Though I have a feeling most of this episode is going to be us talking about theories. <laughs> like, for instance, I'm pretty sure Adrian's father is Papaleon, a.k.a. Hawk Moth. That's another thing she doesn't like about the English dub. Though it's apparently his name in all the other countries. Which makes absolutely no sense. Papillion is literally French for butterfly. So apparently that's not badass enough for the villain? <laughs> uh, well, at least I didn't change Cat Noir or uh, Ladybug's name. Cat Noir could have been so bad if English... Englished improperly. <laughs> Because it probably would have been like Black Black Cat, because it would have been Black Cat Noir. Kind of like how um, Common Writers at one point was translated as Masked Common Writers in the U.S. Yeah, so it was Masked Masked Rider. Mm -hmm. So apparently you have to wear two masks. Actually, that kind of works. You have your normal person mask, and then you have your superhero mask. And neither of them is the real you. <laughs> so let's see. My favorite character actually isn't one of the main cast. <laughs> it was like the moment I saw this character, I was like, I like you. I like her design. That's what really made me like her. Is her design, I really like it. Uh, Juliette? Something like that. The Maybe punk it was Juliet or... Ju it was something with a J. Yeah, the problem is English versus French. Mm-hmm. So, you know her, the goth punk rock looking girl who becomes Reflecta. Yeah, just think about her design. When I first saw her in, like, the first actual episode of the series, I was like, I want to find out more about her! <laughs> uh, and speaking of character design, there's only one character design that makes me go, what were they thinking when they designed her like this? Were they going for the puppy dog look? Is that what they were going for? Because her eyes are huge! She became Princess Perfume. <laughs> Rose. Yeah, just something about her character design drives me crazy because her eyes are too big for her head. Well, she's the super ultra nice, gentle person. All of the classroom falls into tropes. Mino's the laid back cool guy. Adrian's the Wonder Bread class star. Chloe's the mean girl. Sabrina's her lackey. Isla's the techno geek. Nice change having it be a girl. Ah, uh, Marinette's the Mary Sue. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of funny how long it took me to realize that. I'm like, wait a minute. She, she literally falls into the category of Mary Sue. Even in the pilot episodes, she still is a Mary Sue. Because her one flaw is a flaw that can be forgiven because it's so endearing. She's the klutzy girl. She's the klutzy shy girl, both of which are apparently very cute things. Mm -hmm. Not that I have anything against her for being a Mary Sue, because she's actually a type of Mary Sue I can enjoy, especially since this isn't really a super serious story. The super serious stories are when Mary Sues become a problem, because they make the story too easy. They resolve the conflict too easily. Yes, but she has to have some ease of conflict resolution because Ladybug, good luck, Black Cat, bad luck. They're total opposites. Mm-hmm. And another point I brought up to you a couple of days ago when we were finishing watching up the series was the fact that Adrian's costume does a better job at hiding his identity than Marionette's does for her because it obfuscates his features more. Even though he still has Adrian's face, but because of the ears and the way the mask is shaped and the way his overall costume looks, he looks completely different compared to Adrian, compared to Ladybugs versus Marionette. Because pretty much it's just like, Marionette, take off that mask. <laughs> <laughs> also, their personalities are very similar. Marionettes and Ladybugs. The only real difference is a slight bit of more confidence. Slight? 
what was more dramatic in the pilot episodes. But they're still very similar. And that confidence starts to transfer into Marionette, too. Especially by the end of the pilot. Mm -hmm. But Adrian is completely different. <laughs> yes, Adrian is so quiet and gentle and doesn't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Not even that witch Chloe. And... Chat Noir is cocky and total ladies' man type, even though he's only interested in Ladybug. He just is a all-around jokester. Mm -hmm. And he uses puns a lot, which drives Ladybug absolutely up the wall, sometimes quite literally. <laughs> ah, so any particular nitpicks of this series, other than it being kind of disjointed and episode of the week kind of thing at first? Well, you know, the same thing could be said for a lot of series, especially children's shows. Mm -hmm. There are things that even after watching the origin story still don't entirely make sense. If all the miraculous are good and good powers not meant to be used for evil, then why does Ladybug's ability combat Neuros? Maybe um, Ladybug and Cat Noir are there to keep the others in line. Because they are the most powerful of the Miraculous. They are the most powerful, but that still seems kind of odd. And if that's the case, then how do the Kwamis know that? That only Ladybug can capture the Akuma? Has, have we had somewhere in history where one or other of the Miraculouses went to the bad? Went rogue? Mm -hmm. I don't know. They haven't explained much of this history yet. We've only gotten hints of it in episodes like this one the one with the book and the egypt one mm -hmm. also there's that whole thing where they're heavily hinting that adrian's father is that guy i'm like especially in the pilot episode that silhouette is so his unless they're going with he has an evil twin <laughs> i really don't think they're going for that especially since adrian's father had the book and i don't know if you noticed this but he also had another Miraculous. I don't think he knows it yet. If you look inside the safe, there's a peacock pin. That's Miraculous. I needed to pause on that screen to see everything that was in the safe. So I knew there were some other smaller items in there that were probably Miraculous related. He may know that it's Miraculous, especially since he has the book. But since Neuro's power is working for him, and what he really wants are the black cat ring, and the ladybug earrings. The dude, how are you going to wear those? <laughs> They're not clip-ons. I think the reason he wants to get all the together is because apparently if you have at least those two, you have the power of creation and destruction. What I think he wants to do is bring back his wife. Yes, that's very obviously what he wants to do. And that's the reason Adrian is so sheltered. Yes, because that's all he has left of his beloved wife. Classic supervillain story, and he doesn't need all the miraculous, and he knows that. He specifically needs the black cat ring and the ladybug earrings, because whoever holds those two holds ultimate power. You'll notice that the man with the turtle, Kwame, gave them out separately. Mm -hmm. He didn't give both to one person. So they're not supposed to be combined. And really, how many people did he try those tricks on before he found those two? Are you telling me that in all of Paris, only those two stopped to help an old man? Well, not really stop. In Marionette's case, yank him out of traffic. <laughs> yes, but she stopped what she was doing. Mm -hmm, and sacrificed something in the process. Yes. Actually, both of them sacrificed something to help him. Mm -hmm. Because Adrian lost enough time to run into the school, and Marionette lost most of her macarons. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe Marionette and Adrian were the only two who sacrificed something in the process of helping him. That could be it. And that would make more sense of why he would choose them over anyone else, because they put someone else's well-being above themselves, which is a classic superhero trait. A lot of people are nice enough to, you know, hand an old man his cane, or keep him from getting hit by a car. Mm -hmm. I also like the fact, this is not going back to the pilot episodes, the fact of that Marinette didn't fall for him because he was a pretty boy. She fell for him because he was ultra nice to her at the end and said, here, have my umbrella. <laughs> also classic thing for someone to have an umbrella and give it to the girl. 
Mm -hmm. But, you know, he didn't really need it because it was probably only a few steps to the chauffeured vehicle. Also, uh, another theory slash things that they seem to be hinting at in this series is that Adrian's mother may have been the owner of that miraculous that's in the safe. Mm. Yes, especially if you look at the picture that's guarding the safe. Mm -hmm. So we may get more hints at that in the future, and that's probably how he, the father, found out about it later. Because maybe the book also belonged to her. Entirely possible. But I swear, I think Marinette's, almost her entire class has been akumatized. I think all we're missing is the teacher, herself, and Chat Noir at this point. I think teachers, because I think they've had multiple teachers, but their homeroom teacher is that woman. Because I know there's a science teacher we had in the episode with the perfume. Then we have their home reef teacher, which is the, I think her name was Lady Butterfly or Lady Butter something. Yes, but I'm saying I don't think any of the teachers have been akumatized, if I'm recalling correctly. The only teacher I think that's been akumatized has been one of Adrian's. The fencing instructor, but the fencing class is separate. It's not part of the school. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't count. Yeah, I don't think anyone else in the school has been akumatized, but we've had only a couple of people outside of the school. Specifically, Pixelizer, the mime and you know, other than Adrian's teacher. I'm trying to remember. I know there's at least one more person. that's Adrian's instructor, Marinette's uncle. Oh, yeah. The man in the park with the pigeons. Oh, yeah. Oh, and Stormy. Yes. Going back to character designs, her and the puppet master are two of my favorites. And they both look very similar. Also, puppet master would be another one who's not oh, in yeah. Marinette's class. She is. Actually, that's a pretty even number, I think. But it's been most, it was mostly all of the kids in her class. Mm -hmm. And even though it happened to Stoneheart, can you be akumatized twice? Well, if the original Akuma is caught and purified, you can't be akumatized in the same way. But could you fall prey to negative emotions and Papillion choose to take a second chance on you? Mm -hmm. I also like how you think people may be able to refuse Papillion. <laughs> Well, so far, everyone is given a bargain, and very few people have done anything other than say yes. They say, I agree. They say yes. In the case of Princess Fragrance, she just went, oh, yes, I will have my prince, which is agreeing by default. Mm -hmm. Speaking of agreeing by default, how Tiki in the pilot episode was talking to marionette how i was like all you have to do is say transform transform me <laughs> <laughs> yes but at least she apparently got more information from tiki than adrian did from plog yeah well as you said adrian was very sheltered and he's like i gotta try this toy out <laughs> or marionette is you know the shy reclusive type though it's also interesting that she is such a fan of adrian's father well he is a famous designer and she's a famous well, he's a famous clothing designer, and she wants to be a clothing designer. That's what all her sketches is about in that hat episode. I like how she incorporates her signature into her designs in such a way that it's part of the design, but she can't tell that it's a signature until she's like, lip. <laughs> mm -hmm. And once again, let's go back to lack of character development. All the stuff that Chloe does, lie, cheat, and steal, no progress and no real punishment. I think the worst punishment... I've seen her get is she got kicked off the tasting panel in Kung Fu and in digital she didn't get a ticket to Jagged Stone's concert. <laughs> also in Reflecta she didn't end up being in the set of second pictures they took with the girl. True but that might not have been the official class photo because it was taken after school and off school grounds. They might not have gotten the principal to substitute the photo. And she chose not to. That's not punishment. Because she was standing over there. She could have very easily gotten into the photo. Yeah. Ah. So, what are your favorite things about the series so far? Well, obviously, I like Chat Noir. Though, personality-wise, I'd rather hang out with Tiki than Plog. <laughs> oh, yeah, Plog. I like how you're like, I wonder what the other Cat Noirs are like to make him like that. I'm like, I'm thinking that's just the way Plog has always been. Yeah, I'm like, but... Does that personality really, you know, align better with the other chat noirs over the centuries? Because Plog gets frustrated with Adrian's gung-ho attitude. So it's like, were the other cats a little more mellow? <laughs> or uh, a little bit more like a lazy cat. Because mm -hmm. that's how Plog is, except for the fact that Plog eats cheese. 
what did Plog eat before this cheese? Because I'm pretty sure they didn't have that cheese back in Egypt. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that couldn't specifically be camembert. And really, he refuses to eat anything else. I mean, the stuff that Adrian presented him looked pretty good. And we focus mostly on what Plog eats because it's like a running joke, him and the cheese. But if I recall correctly, we've only seen Tiki eat chocolate chip cookies. I'm pretty sure we've seen her eat sweets, period. Yeah. So between the two, who really has the worst taste? <laughs> also, that might explain why Tiki's so hyper all the time. <laughs> also, why she was sick in that one episode. <laughs> I love how you're like, how do they get sick? And I'm like, I have no idea. But apparently the rain was supposed to be a clue. How it was all wet and she fell out in the rain. I'm like, yeah, but they've done that before. <laughs> also, magic creature that gets sucked into a pair of earrings. It's like normal things you wouldn't think would make them sick. Also, make her that sick. Mm-hmm. So please continue with your favorite things because I think I interrupted. <laughs> and sidetrack me into nitpicking, yes. So, obviously I like Chat Noir's design. Uh, the destructive power actually seems more logical to me than Marinette's power. And Marinette's power is basically a Mary Sue power. I get to make everything go my way. I get to make everything better again. Yes, because the Lucky Charm, she gets whatever she needs to solve the situation. The Lucky Sight tells her how to use it. And she always has to make use of this power because she needs to take that object throw it into the air, and yell Miraculous Ladybug in order to put Paris back together. So she can't ever not use the power. Mm-hmm. At least in this first season. It would be really interesting if we found out something else can negate it. Could Cat Noir actually use his power on the object before she gets a chance to use it? Well, the Cataclysma would only destroy the item. It wouldn't purify the Akuma. And the Cataclysma doesn't put things back together. They very clearly say in the origin story that the ladybug power is the power of creation which is probably why she has the power of restoration mm -hmm. i.e in code lyoko the return to the past except this return to the past doesn't go making xana stronger yeah and it also holds over people remember it happening yes which is actually very handy mm -hmm. it doesn't reset anyone's memory except for the person who was akumatized they just forget what happened mm-hmm which is probably just as well, because they weren't really themselves and, you know, the guilt of everything that they did. Because, I mean, Stoneheart broke, uh, what's her name's father's arm, and Antibug was going to throw Chat Noir off a building. Also, I really liked there that she saved Chat Noir as herself, and also that she didn't stay around to get credit for it. Mm -hmm. Are you done with your favorite things, and shall I move on to mine? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I pointed out the girl. I just something about her character design was really nice. Something about the way people draw goth people sometimes is just really nice. There are times where I'm like, you went a little too far, man. I can't see them if they stand in front of a black wall. That's bad character design, man. But I, I really like the series. I like the writing. It does fall flat in some places, but that's because they're doing the uh, monster per week thing. And you can only do so much within that formula. I'm glad that it sounds like the writers are actually going to take this next season more seriously and be more story focused from what I've read about it. I guess it's because they weren't expecting the series to really take off like it did. <laughs> I'm glad I'm getting to see the rest of the episodes in English now. <laughs> I, I do like Ladybug. She's a nice character, but like I said, she doesn't fall into the Mary Sue thing. I do like Cat Noir more than Ladybug, both Adrian and Cat Noir. I like Tiki and Plague equally. Because they're both interesting characters and they both have their own little quirks, especially Plague and his like, but I'm hungry, man. <laughs> and there's like so many little things in the episodes. I'm like, I want to know more about that. I want to know more about that. I want to know more about that. Why aren't you telling me more about that? <laughs> so yeah, those are some of my favorite things. <laughs> uh, so shall we wrap this up? Never. <laughs> uh, I know you said Stormy was your favorite villain character design, but who was your favorite Monster of the Week villain? Ah, hmm. 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 <laughs> I also want to say Stormy too, but <laughs> like thinking, thinking. Out of all of them, which did I like more? <laughs> hmm. 
they're all kind of blending together in my head right now, and I'm like worried I'll miss some of the first ones because I haven't watched those episodes in a while. <laughs> no, I think about it. I don't really have pick or one I feel strongly towards. I like them kind of all equally. I liked some concepts better than others, like the animal, a animan, I think they called that episode. I like that concept. Like, oh, you can transform into different animals. Hmm. Also the T-Rex. I don't know if that, that kind of classifies as an animal. Also, it's extinct, so <laughs> apparently there's no limits on that. Apparently as long as it lives on land somewhere, either in the sky or on the ground. <laughs> Though you probably could do something in the water too, but it wouldn't be a good idea to do that while you're on land. So, that's about it on that. <laughs> well, Painter was one of my favorites because he just wanted Chloe to stop picking on him, to be able to ask Marinette on a date, and if I could draw, I would totally want that power. It is a nice power, but it can be a bit dangerous. <laughs> you thought I would pick him, didn't you? No. <laughs> no, I knew you wouldn't. We did talk about it when I first got to that episode. Uh, but he was one of my favorites because it was a small thing that he wanted. And he didn't really want to hurt anyone. Just Chloe. <laughs> and, you know, it was hard because Ladybug was totally in sympathy with him. It's like, dude, I get it, but I can't let you do this. She had that, like, a couple of times in the episodes. Like, I have to save Chloe. <laughs> yeah, like... but it wasn't very often that... Well, I can't say it wasn't very often because Kung Fu and a few other ones, they were directly after Chloe. Directly after Chloe. Yeah, it's kind of like how White Mage is. Damn my White Mage oath. 8-bit theater for you youngsters. <laughs> uh, so shall we wrap things up? Or do you have more? You seem to always have more. I always have more. Because <laughs> <laughs> we haven't really gotten to some of the stuff that I've been thinking of with the powers. It's like, well, how is Ladybug able to purify the Akuma? How do we know that they're called Akuma? Is that how Nuro would normally bequeath the champion power? By doing it in a butterfly? So is that normal and it's just the darkness of it that's different? Hmm. Maybe. But any circumstance where Nuro's power is normally good, why would Ladybug's yo-yo turn into a net specifically to catch a butterfly? Where else in all of heroism is that useful? Useful enough to be the secondary function of the yo-yo. Which, by the way, is a kick-ass weapon. People forget that yo-yos were originally weapons. Mm -hmm. Go play Star Tropics. And I love how she has, like, infinite length of line. And also another thing in the pilot of like, ah! <laughs> Yeah, well that's not something you should be able to instantly master. Chat Noir had the advantage of having all the fencing and karate classes and stuff, so more physically coordinated. And, you know, also we established that Marinette was very clumsy, though apparently having the Kwame of good luck has helped her out a lot. Mm -hmm. I think she already had good luck before because her clumsiness kind of led to some good stuff. And you actually get hints of her still being clumsy in other episodes. You do, but not to the degree that she was before. So I think some of the strength and coordination of being Ladybug transfers back to her along with the confidence. Mm -hmm. I think it's just all the extra activity she does. No kidding. And then got all the back and forth between Chat Noir and Ladybug and Adrian and Marionette. And when they run into each other in their opposite forms. When Chat Noir helps... Marinette, when Marinette's talking to Chat Noir when looking for Adrian. <laughs> Though I, we didn't have a whole lot of Adrian and Ladybug, but when we did, it was awesome because we had the matchups of everyone who's in Adrian, i.e. Chat Noir, loves Ladybug, and Marinette, i.e. Ladybug, likes Adrian. So that was the one matchup where they like totally couldn't speak to each other. <laughs> Because Adrian's like, oh my god, it's Ladybug. And Ladybug is, oh my god, it's Adrian. <laughs> uh, just out of curiosity, do you think the lady who became Volpina will actually become Volpina? Oh yes, we have not seen the last of her. If you notice, there was still plenty of darkness in her heart after the rescue. She's going to come back and she's, if not on Papillion's side, at the very least against Ladybug. Mm-hmm. If not Ladybug and Chat Noir. Yeah, that's definitely going to be interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, she was a little punk. I mean, 
She was lying. She stole Adrian's book. I mean, he already stole it from his father, but let's see. Stealing on top of stealing. Mm -hmm. And then hides it in the trash. Do you have any idea how much I winced? <laughs> I wasn't paying attention at that time because I was trying to read the subtitles. <laughs> no, I was like, no, no, no. It's a book. And apparently a very rare and valuable book. Also, nice touch that, you know, she was a fox spirit. You know, fox warrior with the power of illusion. Foxes, illusions. Nice pull on Japanese mythology. Also, nice pull on Chinese culture for kung fu. And going back to the kung fu episode nitpick, in what type of cooking competition series, show, broadcast, do you not have cameras in the kitchen? <laughs> uh, I don't remember. I remember you saying that you had a complaint about that episode. I just didn't remember what the complaint was. The complaint was in that type of show, there would definitely be cameras in the kitchen to watch the chef preparing the food and seeing, you know, what troubles they were coming into. Usually competing chefs have to share kitchen space and there was no one there for him to compete against. So his only failure was if the tasting panel didn't care for his food, not if they liked someone else's food more. So that part was not realistic. But not having cameras in the kitchen is even less realistic. Reality shows put cameras everywhere. Ah, and that just reminded me, you had some nitpicks about the Simon Says episode. No kidding. Since when are soldiers zombies? The cards very clearly had pictures of soldiers on them. But the people that Jack Day designated as soldiers walked around like zombies. I mean, it was practically the mummy animation from the Egyptology episode. Also, when you use that gorilla card on uh, Adrian's body card, I saw no difference, did you? Very little. Basically, just adding walkie on his knuckles. <laughs> uh. And why did everyone sing when they came under Princess Fragrance's spell? Uh. But you seem to enjoy it when Cat Noir went. <laughs> yeah, because it was really funny, okay? <laughs> So, also another nitpick slash issue you had with the Simon Says episode was at the very end where he calls out Ladybug and Cat Noir. Yeah. Okay, Nino, superheroes aren't really celebrities. Also, they just might be doing something a tad more important. And how are you going to call out celebrities that no one can get a hold of? Mm -hmm. The only time they show up is when actual trouble happens. And specifically, only actual trouble that involves akumatized people. Not necessarily. We have seen background things where they have helped other people. Also, they have shown up for other events. Remember the dedication of the statue where we have the Chat Noir doppelganger? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, copycat. I, I like how that episode played out. It was a little embarrassing to watch the end part where, don't you know how much they like, uh, she likes me and how we're together? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and how Chat Noir used that to prove that he was himself. Mm -hmm. So, shall we actually wrap things up this time? Mm -hmm. Overall, I really liked this series and this season, and I can't wait for the next one to start. I'm not quite sure when that is. I just know they're working on it, and apparently they have a lot of reference stuff done, because, like I said, there's images online from back at Comic-Con. Oh, you mean stand in line, Con. <laughs> yeah, take a picture, and you're guaranteed to get a hundreds of people standing in line at that con like is it even a con anymore <laughs> no no it isn't <clears throat> thank you twilight fans <laughs> we're not talking about the pony <laughs> just to be clear we're we're talking about um well you know what we're talking about the series where the girl can't decide whether to date the werewolf or the vampire well so i'm trying to feel like wait a minute Hmm. <laughs> and then there's the wonderful fan fiction that everyone seems to love. <laughs> oh, her expression was priceless. Ah, uh, it involves a man named Grey. <laughs> maybe Fifty Shades of it? <laughs> and maybe this has absolutely nothing to do with Miraculous Ladybug and we should wrap it up? Well, like I said... I can't wait to see the next season. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully it'll come out after the next season of Voltron Legendary Defender. We need some pacing here. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you all enjoyed our thoughts 
on Miraculous, The Adventures of Ladybug and Cat Noir, Season 1. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe. You could send a little good luck our way by making a pledge on Patreon or Coffee. No bad luck, but I would still like to make a black cat joke. Want us to cross your path more often? Same thing. Give us a hand. Leave us a comment. Also, you can share the luck by checking out Tumblr and DeviantArt and, hmm, I don't know, maybe sharing those.